And finally, audience. Um, one of the most important things to consider here is where the audience is and when the audience is. And every example that I've used so far, for obvious reasons, we've been looking at the documentation. Um, in many cases, uh, performance is received by an audience through documentation. It is completely different to experience a performance firsthand. Just like it's completely different to go to a, a play or a, an orchestra concert and see it first person as opposed to seeing the recording of it. There is a relationship, a dynamic, a conversation that cr is created in a live performance. Some performance art is done strictly for the documentation, as in perhaps Chris Burden's shoot. Um, now, I want to consider that this, what this does is this creates these new spaces for the audience to be, whether it be something like YouTube or Vimeo, which has this sort of social context to it, this sort of social component. Um, you post a video to YouTube, you get comments, you get response videos, uh, then you post a response, and so forth. Um, there's quite a bit of performance that's going on in YouTube. Uh, there are also live interaction video spaces like Ustream, which is really about setting up a camera and creating a space for um, others to watch what you're doing or what's going on, whether it be a newsworthy event or otherwise. And Chat Roulette, which takes that and connects two people sort of at random and anonymously. But beyond that, there are these other spaces that allow live interaction, whether it be something like Second Life, which allows you to go in with an avatar or World of Warcraft or something like that, or another game space which puts you into a place with other users, other viewers, that you can have some sort of social interaction with. I want to look at um, Chat Roulette first. And this is a, a piece by a, an artist that goes by the name of Merton. Let's watch this real quick. Reclining dude in a white tank top, leaning his head on his hand. Semi Italian looking. Just like his parents had planned Probably hanging in New York City From the looks of the walls I only hope that he does not choose to show me his What's up? Hanging on chat roulette Aw, oh, come on! Man in the dark with his headphones on Doesn't want no one to see him Sitting there late at night on chat roulette Girl in the dark, how you doing tonight? Where you living in the world? Are you doing all right? No headphones, you got some speakers Saw the reflection in the flames of your glasses And I thought that it was some headphones Sorry I misunderstood the situation Turn up the contrast and your face got brighter It's interesting how screens and cameras are related that way Now I can see you a tiny little bit later A pro is someone who makes money for what they do And in that sense I am not at all So you see what he's doing is um, He's definitely using the performing arts And he's very seriously got a background in it um, he's creating these improvisational piano pieces based on what he sees in the video. And his response to that is then, I mean, the, the person on the other end sees it. It's like having a private performance that's being videotaped, I guess. So in this case, the audience is the one person on the other side of it. But then we're also part of the audience, right? Because we're, we're viewing this in the documentation. The screenshot that I, the last screenshot that I had of his had like over seven and three quarters million hits uh, for this particular video. But in addition to that, he had three million on the video before he edited it or re-edited it for YouTube. Now, what Chat Roulette does is it 
it sets up an immediate connection between strangers. It allows two people to have this kind of intimate, anonymous conversation. It, what it does is it retains, it, it attempts to like retain the gaze back and forth of the, of the two people. And the performer then sort of works to not get nexted, to not get sort of passed on. It becomes this like sort of strange performance venue. But with the, so this anonymity comes this, this sort of weird um, exhibitionism. And there are a lot of um, men showing their private bits sort of on this. And Chat Roulette has done a lot of work to, to try to filter that out. And that's actually become an art form and very interesting in and of itself in that they're using uh, image recognition algorithms to recognize human genitalia. Uh, moving along uh, to talk about uh, Ava and Franco Matas, I want to look at uh, an example of the video that they posted called No Fun. So this is very serious in several levels. Uh, for one thing, it's extremely disturbing. Um, the idea of someone committing suicide and uh, streaming it live to the internet um, is unfortunately a reality. And that Abraham Biggs committed suicide on Justin TV in 2008. Um, so the possibility of this, I mean, it, it is a reality. And the, the one thing that is really encouraging about this is that there was at least one person who did the right thing, who tried to find a way to report it. But the flip side of that is that this is fake, that this was set up by the artists. And so when you, when you are watching it, when you're watching the responses and you hear people go, oh, that's fake, well, they're right. When you hear, I mean, it's like, the, the question is, is like when, when Big's suicide, when, when he committed suicide on Justin TV, the people who are watching it thought it was fake. So the big question is, is what is the correct response? How does one respond to seeing something like this? Particularly if you believe that it's live. How, how do you report it? What do you do about it? Um, how do you reach out to the person? Uh, the last piece that I want to cover is a little bit more lighthearted, thankfully. Um, and, but it's also by Eva and Franco Matis. Um, and this is a re-performance of Chris Burden's shoot. Let's take a quick look at that. So the thing that's interesting about this is that it questions the idea of like authenticity and performance. What does it mean to perform something that's been done before? Um, and particularly in this case, what does it mean to do it in a different environment? Um, it completely recontextualizes the work. Um, it changes it totally. When you look at the cartoon character shooting the other cartoon character, it means something completely different in our society. Um, a hundred years ago, the, a drawing of one person shooting another person would have meant something completely different. Uh, but with game culture, as it is right now, it's, it's more acceptable. And I question that, actually. All right, so, so finally, um, in, in wrapping up, I want to point out that machines and avatars are being used in place of the body more and more in performance. Um, and that's not to say that there aren't other venues for performance like Facebook or Twitter um, or any sort of socially connected medium. And that these sort of extreme conditions, these actions that are not easily reproduced are the ones that are most common. And there have been endurance performances in virtual environments as well. Uh, but that fundamentally, Performance art is a conceptual act. It's about the ideas that are behind it as opposed to the specifics of the action itself.